Hello folks, Don't Hunter here. I've had a few requests talk about things I've done as a kid and type of food I ate and work I've done and just growing up as a kid how it was. I'll tell you why I lived on like almost like an island almost out in the middle of the swamp. And uh, so one request was a young lady said, What did y'all eat <laughs> down there in the south? Well, huh, we ate about the same thing you probably ate in the north, but it doesn't matter. It might be a little bit different from stuff some ice. So I'll, I'll go and bring a few things that that I had for supper, okay? Sometimes Daddy would be gone out on the boat four, five, six days maybe. Well, at times we didn't have no money. So, I mean, any time Mom would tell me, she says, go pick some blackberries. So I'd take the pot and go to the woods and pick a big old pot of blackberries. i get back home. She'd cook them down. And didn't really have no store-bought sugar. But we had some sugar cane molasses that had done granulated and evaporated down. It was, it was almost like sugar. It was sugar. It just evaporated out of syrup. And she used that for sweetening. And uh, all we had a little bit of flour. So she mixed up some flour, made some dumplings, and put some dumplings in them backberries. That's what we all had for supper. It don't sound like much, but you know what, though? It filled that belly up, and that's all, that was all it was important, getting that belly full. And there was how many of you kids? There was five of you kids, well, there right? there five of us, yeah. Plus your mama, so that's yeah. six people. It filled, Joel. And another time, I, I picked up a bunch of carpet one day in the dump and went and sold it. And uh, I think I had about eight or nine dollars. I had a pretty good chunk of money, you know. So I told Mama, I said, uh, I done bought my school clothes. I said, I only use this to buy me a, a swimming mask, a snorkel, and a spear gun. She said, well, okay. So I went to town. I went down, found it, and I bought it. Can't even remember now where I bought it. It might have been Woolsworth because it's been a long time ago. So anyway, to bring the story together, what I wanted for was go to about the Old Ocean Springs Bridge. And I'd swim around the piling, and I'd see them sheephead. I'd like get a couple of nice big ones like that, and I'd shoot them with a spear gun. I had a little p road I paddled Daddy made for me, a little eight-foot p road. So I paddled back to the bayou and pulled it up on the bank there where we kept it. Nobody messed with nothing back then, you know. And uh, Mama made some of the best crab cakes. We called them crab patties, but crab cakes is what most people know about that I've ever ate in my life. Well... She'd say, sometimes, you know, like I said, daddy be gone, money was short. She said, you need to go catch some crabs and get a couple of sheephead for supper tonight. So I'd take off. And I'd paddle out there to the bridge. I'd shoot three or four sheephead. And I'd paddle over there. Well, we lived, like I said, it was kind of like an island. But it did have a, a beach on the water there. Probably had a little sandy beach, maybe about, oh, I don't know, half as big as a football field, maybe. But you had the shoreline was longer than that, but it wasn't a sand beach. It was just a rough bank and stuff, you know, or marsh grass. But then crabs would come in there. You'd go down there with a five-gallon bucket and a, and a dip down. You'd pick you up a bucket of crabs just in a little while. So I'd go get a couple, two or three sheephead. Then I'd go get a bucket of crabs and uh, bring them home. And I'd clean the sheephead up and cut all the bones out and cut them up in little pieces about that big. And while I was doing that, I had the crab boiling. I built a fire out in the yard and put a, a wash tub on it, in it, on top of the fire. I had a little thing I set it on, and I boiled them crabs up. When the crabs got done, Mom and my two sisters, and my baby sister was too young at the time, would uh, start picking the crabs, and I'd be boiling that sheep head up. Take that sheep head and cut it like I said, a little cube about that big with no bones in it. And put some crab oil in the water. And you boil that sheep head meat up and you drain it out. And it's flaky, almost looked almost like crab meat. But after you boil it with that crab oil, it even tasted like crab meat. And mama would mix the crab meat with the sheep head. That's what she'd make them nice big crab cakes out of. Oh, so the sheep head was like an extra filler to the crab? Okay. Yeah, well, it... It tastes like crab meat. Right. So you didn't know, you know. Yeah. She even she even stuffed crabs and had the same mixture with the sheep head huh. and the crab meat and sell them. Everybody raised about how good her stuffed crabs was. <laughs> you couldn't totally tell the difference between a sheep head 
it's a fish, a sheephead, yeah, yeah. Then, then you would the crab. So it took on the flavor of the other meat because it was cooked in the same stuff? Okay. You cook it with the crab ball and it had that, had that seasoned flavor to it. It was good, you know? And a lot of times, uh, and I love this, we'd have it pretty regular. I'd go get some crabs, come home, and I'd clean them. I'd back them and clean them and everything. And then she'd make up a brown roux with some filet, and she'd put them crabs in there, the crab bodies in there, broken half after they'd been cleaned, break them in half. And then she'd put some onions in there, and we'd eat it on rice with crab stew. Mm. And even to the day right now, that, that makes my mouth water when I think about it. That was some good eating back then. Mm -hmm. And we also, we had a garden, you know, and we raised stuff in the garden. Uh, I know I ate a crowd of peas, so I, I, don't, I don't even want to look at a crowd of peas now, you know. But we raised okra, tomatoes, we had snap beans, we had pole beans, a uh, crowd of peas. In the winter time, we had a lot of turnips and uh, busted greens and stuff like that. Plus, we had uh, quite a few different fruit trees. We had plum, the little wild plum, had plum trees. We had one grapefruit tree that made a big old pink grapefruit about that big, delicious. Uh, we had blueberries. No, I'm wrong. One blueberry bush. It was, it was. Uh, can't think of it right now. And then we had a, we had a muscadine vine with muscadines and stuff. And don't you have a muscadine vine out front? No, that's a uh, uh, scupping on. No, it's muscadine. What we had back when I was a kid was was uh, a scupping on. Okay. They don't get near as big. They only get about that big. You know. What I got out there, big stuff. We had persimmon tree, uh, fig trees. We had, quite, we had quite a few huckleberries, but I was trying to think a while ago, instead of blueberry, huckleberry. We had three or four huckleberry bushes. They're so little, it takes a while to pick some, but I go out there and boy, I pick a, a pot full after about an hour, you know. Of course, eating some too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and mom would make either huckleberry dumplings, a cobbler like, or she'd make a pie. That was out of this world, you know. But uh, yeah, we ate a lot of we ate a lot of food that maybe majority of the people didn't eat. <laughs> but it was good, healthy food. There was nothing wrong with it. It was delicious, you know. And, uh, I was just glad I was able to kind of contribute a little bit to bringing some of the food to the house because I'd take my pellet gun after I finally I saved enough money to buy me a pellet gun. And we had a little, little bird called a marsh hen, about like that, and it. Was, they lived in the bayou, see, and they run along the bank getting worms and stuff. And uh, I get my P-Row, and I just let the current take me down the bayou, and I shoot them, and they get them. And I get about 10 or 12, I come home clean them. Mama make uh, gumbo with them, or she'd fly and fry them. And that's just a good eating you want to put in your mouth, you know. So we, we had a lot of stuff that I harvest wild, like rabbit and stuff. Uh, coon didn't care that much for possum. It's a little too greasy. <laughs> but uh, I don't think we need we need no snakes. We eat a lot of alligators. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with alligator meat. No, there's not. <laughs> but uh, when Daddy get in, we had a little money there, and we'd go to town. We'd all walk to town and buy groceries. There was five of us and my mom and Daddy, so. We buy about fifteen dollars worth of groceries. It'd be about six, seven bags full, you know. And we'd all have a bag and walk back home. And now fifteen bucks don't even fill up a bag, does it? Uh, it's about it's about maybe two or three miles from where we lived, you know. But uh, we always got a treat though, cause while we was in a store, Mama let us get us a RC cola and a moon pie. <laughs> and that was our treat, you know. And about once every two or three weeks, we'd get that, you know. But I had kind of a I had kind of a hard life coming up. Uh, it wasn't hard, but it was different. You stayed busy. But it made it made me into the man that I am today. I respect people. I help people. If I see somebody hungry, I'll take food out of my own mouth to give to them. I'll give them a shirt off my back, and that's the way my daddy was. He helped a lot of people. No, we didn't have nothing. We not believe hungry people. He'd give out little we had to other people, so they'd have something, you know. Mm -hmm. and that's just the way I was brought up, you know, and. The, a lot of people nowadays don't like that. It's kind of like dog eat dog, out for yourself, you know. And that's a sad way, I think, to live. So, how about I done spoke about, about all I can think of as far as eating. Oh, we eat a lot of oysters, too. We sold them. We also eat them, too. But uh, another thing, mullet. 
During the Depression, they called it Biloxi Bacon because a lot of people on the coast, that's what they lived on, mullet. That's a fish. People don't know what they are. It's a fish. And they got a, they got a different taste than any other fish. They also got a gizzard. Yeah. And we didn't even clean and eat, fry the gizzard, eat the gizzard too, you know. But sometimes we'd be sitting around the house in the, the summertime, and heck, they can get dark at 9.30 or 8.30, 9 o'clock. And they'd say, boy, I, a mess of fried mullet sure would be good. Me and him, my brother, one of my sisters, we'd jump in the boat and roll right out to a little old sandbar that usually had a lot of mullet on it. He'd make one or two throws with a cast net, have a wash tub full of mullet. We'd get home, we'd clean it. We'd clean them, I was frying them. <laughs> it might be 11 o'clock at night, we all eating fried mullet. <laughs> or ain't had stuff, or whatever, just, you know, just something special, you know. Well, folks, I've talked about enough, so I'm a, adios. Everybody take care of themselves, and remember this. Life is short, but death is forever. So take care of yourself. See you later.